and hitting go live in three, two, one, live. Welcome to Intentional Academy Live, episode nine. I'm Tony Farrar, joined by Nicole Farrar and Justin Thomas to help you squeeze every last drop of value out of your education. We're gonna show you how to win through the power of intentional learning, no matter where you are in life. We're gonna help you manage your time, get control of your money, and launch your dream career. Tonight's gonna to be a fun one. We're back after a long break. Happy holidays and all that kind of stuff. And so now we're just back, ready for 2018 to be the best years of our lives. And we wanna help you do the same. And so tonight's gonna to be back to the typical format. We'll talk a little bit here at the beginning and then we'll launch right into uh, questions that we've got from the intentional community. We are super psyched to get going, so shall we? Yeah, what are we talking about today? All right, <laughs> let's do it. I, uh, I actually had a different topic in mind to start, uh, okay. but then I found myself in a conversation with a colleague today and I just couldn't put it down. And so I want to go a different direction. Um, and that is that we are obsessed with measurements rather than goals. And I think this actually turns out to be pretty timely. The bottom line point that I'm going to make, mm -hmm. and then I'll talk for a while, I guess, but <laughs> is... The goal of going to college is to learn how to add value, to learn how to do incredible things that people need. It's not to get good grades. Grades are a measurement that you're doing that, mm -hmm. but the problem that we run into is that we often focus on the measurement and we can trick ourselves into thinking that we're making progress, even though we're not. Uh, it's, it's the equivalent of somebody who loses weight by having an eating disorder. They're losing weight, but they're not getting into shape. The real goal is to get into shape. And I think we do this as students all the time with our classes. Have you ever done syllabus math? You know what I mean? That thing where you figure out, oh, you know, I only need this many points to get this grade in the class, or if I just, you know, cut this little- Or I can't get a better grade than what I have right now, so- Exactly, exactly. Might as well call it quits and- yeah. yeah. And I think the students do it. What's funny is the reason I got this conversation today in my head was the faculty do it too. We're constantly talking about, you know, ways of raising our school's ranking. That's okay. like, a, that's like everybody's big thing, right? Because if the ranking goes up, everybody gets promoted one level. Just go ahead and assume that, right? And so we started attacking particular measurables, average GPAs, graduation rate, rejection rate. And I've heard some weird stories about things that some schools have done in the past to try and boost their rankings that have nothing to do with actually serving students better. Uh, I heard a story about a school that actually, they wanted to boost their rejection rate. And so they did a direct mail campaign to students who were not qualified for acceptance to the school waiving the right or not the right waiving the entrance fee the, the... the application fee mm -hmm. free application fee and then they send that to a bunch of places where the typical student will not get accepted to the school just so they can reject it to have a higher rejection rate make it seem like Shady. students yeah, make, right? yeah more exclusive i uh i heard another thing this was a wild one uh dealing with uh and of course you know names anonymous to protect the innocent right sure. but uh I heard another one about a school that was, uh, for foreign exchange students, there, there are some countries that will send their students over here uh, on scholarship. Mm -hmm. And that's great. And we do a lot of outreach and a lot of work to make that a possibility. Mm -hmm. But they've got GPA requirements or they lose that scholarship. So okay. I read about a school that was for students on that scholarship that were failing classes, mm -hmm. they just didn't count those grades in their GPA. So like a student would take twelve classes, it's like they didn't take it. It's like a student would take, say, five classes, failed three of them, and they only used the other two classes to calculate the GPA for that semester, so they could report back to the embassy and continue their scholarship. Okay. Because okay. GPA is another measurable that relates to school rank and all this kind of stuff and mm -hmm. scholarship rate, all this kind of stuff. 
And then these are the same people, by the way, who then over the water cooler at work complain about students just always asking the question of, hey, is this going to be on the test? Mm. It's like, mm -hmm. we'll do the same thing. And so, you know, that's not like to, to pick on schools or to pick on students or anything. It's just imagine a school that just produces excellent graduates. Don't you think well, the wanna, ranking would kind of take care of itself? They want to measure that, though. Sure. And that's fine, right? Because people who are exercising to lose weight, they measure that too. That's but the measure of it, part of it isn't the point. The okay. point is getting in shape. The point is graduating amazing students who do interesting and helpful things. The point of taking a class is to learn a subject that you've never seen before and become a micro expert and have a whole new perspective in how you think not just to trick the syllabus into spitting out the letter grade that makes you happy enough uh, while you play video games. So let the work show itself, you know, show for itself. Exactly. The whole, if you love what you do, the money will come. Sure. Right? Sure. You know, if and you care about what you're learning. Well, and then, exactly. well, and then you'll do a, well. a lot of, a lot of, I'm getting an echo. For I'm time. getting an echo. For an echo? Yeah, I get it. I, I'm hearing yeah. myself. <laughs> well, we can't hear you. You can't hear me at all? I can hear you. Oh, that's better now. Okay, it went away. It, I don't know. It's weird. That's weird. Anyway, another okay. thing that it's it, it you have to remember is a university does have a genuine want to produce a a, 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 a fine human being that is going to go out and get do worthwhile things in their community. But they are also a business. So mm. unfortunately, at times, there is a bottom line. So and 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 a lot of times some the universities can end up falling back on that bottom line where are we monetarily because mm -hmm. to increase our footprint our physical footprint here you know you need money to expand to or, or you need donors or you need you, so yeah that, that sometimes you always end up back at some sort of like like monetary or your GPA or worry about how well you're doing. And it, it's hard right, yeah. to do that, but it is going to end up being part of the goal that you set. Cause we've talked about smart goals before. Yeah. Sure. Maybe, maybe a better way of saying what I'm trying to say is that the measured thing usually isn't the goal in and of itself. Mm -hmm. It's reflective of you achieving it. People will donate to the school. If the students that are coming out are excellent, if they had an excellent experience when they were there, you know, those types of things. Uh, sorry, now you, now you got me on a little bit of a tangent here, but okay. uh, backpedaling, uh, Justin used the word, unfortunately, there's a bottom line. Mm -hmm. And I think in the mid, we're going to talk a lot about money tonight. Turns out that's where most of the questions went. Okay. But uh, I think that the the student loan thing and what and some of these very predatory for-profit institutions have given college money a bad name now i know i'm biased because i work at one but i don't think my students would begrudge my salary okay and you know keeping the lights on in a nine-story office building is a $15,000 a month electric bill. And when you start thinking about organizations that operate on that scale, um, it, it's easy with the student loan crisis that our world is apparently facing uh, to start feeling like anytime money is associated with a school, it's a bad thing. And um, honestly, I just, I reject that. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not I'm not disagreeing with you, Justin. No, no, this no, is no, just, no. I a lot of times they had it the, the money aspect is just is used as the measurement tool and it's not necessarily right. right. That's where I'm at. I, nice. But even more importantly than that, like it's gotten a bad connotation. And I don't know that it should. I think that we just need to make sure that we're engaging in sustainable pro practices. The light always shines on the negative though. I mean, in the so end, nice. a university is a for-profit business, and yep. the, the service they provide is an education. And the people yep. that go and give that, that, that business money takes with them however they, they take in said service of that university. So, 
I mean, and yeah, so, you know, that's, I, it, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think it's interesting because I feel like education is the area where you are in control of what worth you're getting with that money. Mm-hmm. I mean, think about it. You know, you spend money on a TV or a car and you get what they made. Mm. You know, you're you're spending that money and hoping that what you get is a worthwhile product. Whereas you spend money on this education and you actually have some control and some power in how you learn and wow. yeah. and how you yeah. utilize it. How do you, yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, not to say that, you know, I mean, you have to count professors and things like that are a factor, obviously, but mm-hmm. you actually do have some control of what you're getting your money's worth mm. out of, which is interesting. Wow. Interesting product. Yeah. You know, other products that the quality that you perceive actually comes back to your effort. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Less them. Mm. Maybe people who pay money to enter into things like Spartan races or uh, <laughs> yeah. marathons, right? I don't know. Oh, that's wild. Oh, I'll have to think about yeah. that one for a while. Well, <laughs> so all that to say, uh, tangent, tangent, uh, mm-hmm. slash tangent. If you're a, if you're a <laughs> programmer, uh, you don't learn by focusing on grades. You learn by focusing on the content, focusing on learning new skills and new mindsets and adjust your efforts in a way that the grade and your mindset, I guess, but more than your effort, Mm -hmm. the grade is a reflection of that learning and then trust the process. Yeah. I've never seen somebody who genuinely learned the material and get a bad grade. (laughs) It's never happened. Uh, Yeah, I would hope. I have at least one student every semester who gets a B that could not do 80% of the work in my class. And it's a constant magic trick to me, trying to readjust the percentages of each assignment and things like that to prevent that from happening. It's not easy. It's really- What do you mean couldn't do 80% of the work? Give them, they get less than 80 on every exam and the final and they still get a B. because there's homework and there's group projects and there's all these other moving parts to the class and people figure out how to double down in those areas without learning the material a lot more effectively so then they get 60s on the exams but because of the waiting on everything it still pops out every semester i try to turn the knobs to stop that from happening and Mm -hmm. it just brings up a new problem it opens a new hole here's a homework assignment but i'm not grading it this is what you guys should be learning and then all of a sudden you get negative reflections on you as a profession or as a professor and then deans are yelling at you and you can't can't fight that kind of system though there's just always loopholes i mean you can't but if you you're your best, yeah. But know, it, but if you're gaming the system in that way, it's not going to work out for you. We won't say yeah. any names, but I can think of somebody <laughs> whose advisor went running down the hall and said, "If you fail this person for senior design, they won't graduate." And of course, that turned into them getting a lower grade, but they still graduated. And then the next time I saw that person, guess what? They'd just been fired. Justin, I, uh, I, I don't. I believe uh, that person. Um, I guess in today's words, became a meme around us, and we would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyhow. Yeah. Learn cool stuff. <laughs> Do neat things. Questions. Sure. Yeah, let's go. Into questions. Which is it, it, questions. I, it's a kind of a great segue into the questions. I planned it that way. Um. So you. Just tonight. <laughs> your voice again so why don't you read it (laughs) (laughs) so is it possible to graduate with a high gpa even if you had a bad start your first semester in college please tell me it gets better Hmm. so the first thing you have to figure out is what a high gpa is Hmm. true and why it matters professionally Hmm. okay tony gone to the doctor lately What's that? Have you gone to the doctor lately? Uh, I took my son. How okay, about that? Okay, where did his pediatrician go to school? Couldn't tell you. And what was his GPA? Oh, at least a 2.0, I think. Oh, yeah, and, and so you trust him completely with the treatment for your son? Yeah, but he wears Star Wars t-shirts to work, so that buys a lot of credibility. There you go. <laughs> Legit. Just, I'm just saying. Yeah. Well, okay. So there, yeah. And and I love that angle on this man, the idea that there's more to life than GPA uh, because there definitely is. 
GPAs have become a tool for computers to filter people. And mm -hmm. a lot of what we talk about when we, when we get into the job hunt stuff is bypassing that machine and getting in front of human beings. And then the GPA starts to erode as far as an important thing. Mm -hmm. Now, there are still the big stodgy institutions that will literally adjust your pay scale based on your GPA. I think we're talking to somebody with that experience. Uh, and that that's, it's going to die. That can't live forever. It, it, but there's another just a means of how much they pay you entry level, pretty much, and how long it takes you through the uh, oh. the on the job training aspect. I want to jump in for a quick mm -hmm. second. I feel like in this situation, obviously, you want to do well in school, and I'm hoping that's what this person is trying to go to here. But I feel like there are benefits to having a high GPA. For example, getting a higher salary in a certain situation, or scholarship op opportunities later on in well, college. Well, and yeah. But I think the difference here and the thing that's really important is not having a high, super high GPA doesn't mean you can't find the job of your dreams. It could help. Mm -hmm. Having a high GPA could help. It could raise your salary. It could help you find a job. It could get you through those filters in the job search of whatever it is that you're doing. Absolutely. But it does not mean you won't find a job. Let me give you, you know, a, uh, a personal example. Before you continue, and the number one thing I keep saying about this is it's only your first job. Mm -hmm. After that first job, nobody cares about your GPA, not a single. Very it true. is always your job experience from your first job. So even if it's not the best first job, even if your salary is not great, get a job in your field that you're interested in doing anything, prove yourself and then move on. You don't have to have great strategy. You know what I mean? I, great I, strategy. I feel like that, if you keep that in mind, it'll decrease the level of stress on how great your GPA is all through college. Heck yeah. Or using that as a measurement tool. Yeah. yeah. But anyhow, personal story, Justin, go for it. The second semester, freshman year, I got two Ds. I had a one nine that, that semester. Apparently, I'm terrible at chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yeah. So I dug my way out. I graduated and you can tell that this still irks a little bit with a 2.9967. Oh. My resume said 30, whatever. <laughs> that being said, I got a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering and I make six figures. There you go. So it's not. Um, how about, let's do the reverse. Okay. I graduated summa cum laude, however you say that. I think mm -hmm. my GPA was like a 3.8. And I got a crummy entry level job when I graduated and had a heck of a time finding a position. But again, after that first job ended, I had such glowing reviews from my boss and from the customers that I worked with, I was able to move on and get a better job. So hmm. my GPA didn't do anything for me. And your GPA <laughs> was gone the second no, for the second job. Exactly. exactly. They didn't do exactly. no. I applied for the second job. All right, and it so... didn't do me any good on the first job. Now, I'm going to completely flip this and answer their actual question, but everything you said is right sure. about, uh, you know, don't worry too much, right? Sure. Just focus on learning that value. That's what, that's what we preach around here, and we mean it because real-life stories. I know this is anecdotal, but the truth is sure. you could study 100 people, and you'd find the same thing. I'm sure, sure of it. Uh, so can you? The answer is yes, you yeah. absolutely can, and it really depends on where you go to school. Where I went to undergrad, if you, I don't know how bad a bad start is. This person says a bad start. When I hear bad start, I think D's and F's, which even D's for major specific courses or some of these gateway classes uh, don't count as passing grade. And you actually have to earn a C minus or better. And so those, this might be a person who's retaking classes. Okay. Now it really matters which school you go to. Where I went to undergrad, uh, we... I think they did two thirds, one third. If you retake a class, as far as calculating your GPA, if you retake a class, the GPA is calculated two thirds using your new grade, one third using the old one. Where I teach now, you get one complete do over. It shows on your transcript the original grade, but as far as the actual GPA number, it's the you new. can retake the class. You could get a B and retake a class and get an a, you get a four O in that class. And the original one just gets over it. Yep. Yep. Interesting. It'll show that you took the class twice, but in the original grade, it'll show up as, as a letter on the transcript, but it doesn't actually show up in the math used to calculate the GPA. So 
that's one way it does actually get better. You said, please tell me it gets better in your question. Uh, it does if you do. Exactly. That's the double down on learning how to learn. Get some tutoring, get some help, figure out how to do the student thing. Find something that lights you up so much that you can't stop learning it. And is that going to work for every class? No. But chemistry. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, every one of us had to take an engineering. I, I, I loved engineering. I loved mechanical engineering. There's classes I took that I could have very happily skipped. Um, but find the ones you love most of the time and then figure out how to learn it. And yeah, if you got to redo a couple classes, that that will help your GPA if you're that concerned about it. All right. What's the next one? Yeah, cool. And the next one, it's it's. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of summarize. It's pretty long, but uh, he's a freshman uh, engineering major at Texas A&M. He's taken 14 credit hours because um, he transferred some AP stuff. Um, he hasn't very he hasn't done very well. He's got a couple of Fs, a couple of Ds on some tests and everything. And um, he he felt like he did all the he did all the quizzes and he was he was getting it on the quizzes. Did all the homework, understood all the homework, but when he took the test, apparently he didn't understand it at all. Um, he, he did very well in high school and doesn't understand all of a sudden it's just not translating. And, uh, he says, uh, the grades are unacceptable. My parents are going to kill me. I feel terribly doubting my ability to succeed in my college major. Has anybody experienced this before? I'm sure the answer to is anybody yes. else experienced this is yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, man. everyone. Oh, I, I <laughs> so definitely many bombed a test one time where I was like, I, I, I know this. I'm gonna dominate this, and then I got like a D on it, and I was floored. But I've also had the opposite. I went into a test completely unprepared. Um, I had another person who ended up not doing engineering teach me part of it. It was a chemistry class. <laughs> funny we come back to that and i got an a on it and he failed the test <laughs> so <laughs> so it's i mean that's so test specific yes, too, exactly. right? how, how you are what kind of test and how you i don't like, know how tony did adjusted. i know and i took a statics class and i i loved my teacher and i thought we, we were doing well and we were forced to take another teacher's final and his class huh. got destroyed by that final Yep. Interesting. Yep. Oh. I know. I know that one. There's so many layers to this one. Okay, so there's the parent part of it, which I think the the real question you need to ask there is, are you being honest with yourself that everything you just said is real and you did your best and things didn't work the way you hoped they would? Because one semester in, if that's the story of your life, there are so many reasons people struggle their first time in the, the first semester of college that have nothing to do with being qualified or being a good student. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally met a student who had a breakdown because they had to do their laundry for the first time. Mm -hmm. These people have never left and, home, never well, been on their own. It, and it wasn't even actually the laundry. It was just realizing for the first time in their life, they were actually out on their yeah. own. And it's like, if I don't drink to eat today, I won't eat, you know? And mm -hmm. that was just such a huge mind mm -hmm. compared to, you know, having mom and dad take care of them that that was really hard for them. And that bled into their grades in really sure. interesting ways. Uh, and when it comes to talking to your parents, just tell them the real story. You know, if, if and by the way, that's your choice. Uh, FERPA is a law. They're not allowed to see your grades unless you choose to tell them. So keep that in mind too. Now, <laughs> now they also don't have to fund your college if, you know, so they're, sure. they're <laughs> yeah. So you know, but you should know the but whole spectrum sure. there, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Um, I was the type that did well in high school without trying. That was part two here. I saw was I did well in high school. Uh, I did really well in high school. Um, was pretty lazy and crummy as a student, and I'd say that culminated when I actually failed a class in college. Mm -hmm. And here I am, you know, now a professor who failed a class that, by the way, is a prereq for every class I teach. <laughs> uh, and that's the magic of college, right? The play, It's a place where you're supposed to go and figure these things out and learn. And if you're not being challenged to the point where sometimes it looks like you might not make it, then you're not challenging yourself enough. Should you fail every semester? No. you got some things to figure out here for sure. Uh, and so that's that's really the meat of the question here. Yeah. But, I mean, it's uh, happened yeah. early. You have time to write the ship. You have time to do some soul searching. I mean. Well, follow your grades 
through the class and find out where the struggle is? Is it the kind of test you need to study differently? College is an insane amount of resources in college. I don't care where you're going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are tutors, there are study sessions. There are people Professor. willing to, to, to work together. You find a, find a buddy that worked for us. A lot of professors are really understanding. It can help. I, there know, was a prof there was one professor that I would go to and ask questions about from and when I was in other classes and he was incredibly facilitating when it came to that and I mean a lot of people used him and he was great. Um, the typical advice that I give here that I think is really helpful or has been helpful for people is write down the process you follow to study mm -hmm. for this exam that the, the problem is this is very person to person yeah there's no you one know? answer for that i mean i got an f on a test one time because it was four questions multiple choice and i flipped a minus sign on two of them 50. Mm -hmm. okay if that's what happened it's just a rough test okay uh but on the other hand if if you thought you were ready and you weren't that points to me at there's a there's a gap or a open loop or something not working in the process you're following to prepare so what i tell people is write down what you did what did you do did you go to lecture did you read the book beforehand afterhand not at all how did you do your homework was it alone was it with other people uh, was a tv on was some sort what of was what was you study for six hours straight or did you do it in chunks right all of those yeah. variables and then as you got ready for this exam now what you have is essentially an instruction list of what you did and usually what will happen is something in that list will automatically identify itself as the weak link for example if it was a closed book test you worked a bunch of problems with the book open and felt like you understood it really well only to discover that without the book there, you couldn't hmm. get the equations to go. Like, things that like that start to, to show sense. up. Mm -hmm. It's like, you see it a million times, like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. And then you actually sit down and that equation just drips out of your brain and you can't do it. Mm -hmm. And so focus on the process because that's what winners do in everything. The outcome is a result of a process you followed. Mm -hmm. So tweak the process fix the fix one part of it and then follow that list and do it for the next exam and see if things go better and if they don't you got more fixing to do good yeah i, like I mean because everybody learns differently some people are visual some people are you know verbal some people so yeah. you got to figure out what works for you and like you said highlight what you do omit what doesn't work all right next question how do you eat healthy uh, and cheap in college nice so that's a good change of subject Who's yes first? i'll jump in to, to at least say also that i'm trying to work on uh, meal plans to offer people to help because i do that anyway for us mm -hmm. um but there's definitely a correlation between eating healthy and affordable mm -hmm. <laughs> affordable food um but a couple key things, you know, you got to get used to leftovers is the number one thing right there. Yeah, the more yeah. you make, the cheaper it is per serving. Yep. Bulk, bulk cooking. You know, one of the main thing, I mean, um, I could have a million examples, but the first thing that comes to mind is I always buy a bunch of chicken, you usually get like, you know, plain chicken, whatever's cheap or pork. And I crack pot it plain. And then I make barbecue chicken and chicken quesadillas and chicken salad and you can get variety healthy just by putting protein, different sauces on. different sauces different vegetables different what have you and mm -hmm. and vegetables aren't really that expensive i know people don't really like vegetables but well, it <laughs> if you're trying to be healthy you know. seasonal vegetables <laughs> if you start eating right. squash in the winter or, or bell peppers and you know things like that so Broccoli. yeah and i looking to see what's on sale mm -hmm. And then kind of working around that, usually the grocery stores, people might not know this, but they, they change their specials like every Thursday. There's also you new know? different specialty stores and things like that that have some, like we've shopped at, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Aldi or Lidl. Yes. Um, and yeah. I mean, it was it was kind of an experience. It kind of caught us off, caught us off guard, but um, 
they, it was like a dozen eggs for 39 cents. So, Whoa. What kind of eggs are these? Uh, they were fine. Well, they but, were great. They baked well and they fried up well. <laughs> it's, it's learning to what what's healthy, right? You want to eat proteins. You want and peanut butter and eggs mm -hmm. and, you know, bulk chicken, bulk pork, things like that. The, those proteins and vegetables are healthy. You know, I think the biggest challenge that people find here is, is one, wanting to eat healthy in the first place. <laughs> Two, um, cooking. You have to cook. That's the problem, you know, and the, that's, that's difficult where, for students yeah. to do. Not the microwave or the heat up a fried yeah. something in the oven. Cheap, yep. healthy, convenient. Pick two. Yes. It, I, I'm mm -hmm. that because I think I, <laughs> I switched off between a chicken breast and some sort of pasta side and like two hot dogs and a box of mac and cheese. Like I did not eat healthy, but it was cheap. <laughs> I will never forget the time that Tony and I had macaroni and cheese in children's paper bowls with wine. <laughs> that yeah. happened. No, well, okay, but I didn't get the healthy part. <laughs> no, but not, the, that the point was the is, fastest. okay, everything that comes out of the middle of the grocery store, chips, frozen dinners, processed, preserved, uh, usually not healthy and more expensive than you think. Potato chips are really expensive, it turns out. Compared to what you're getting. Right. In. Uh, on the other hand, shop around the out of the store, and you might feel like you're spending a bit more, but you actually don't if you cook well. And that's kind of what we're talking about here. Yep. You know, we're not in college anymore, but we yeah. still cook, what, three meals a week? Two, two to three. Two yeah, to three meals I cook like six to eight on servings one. per yep. meal. So we have leftovers yep. for lunches, or we'll do meal and prep. It, and, our... and it's not impossible to do if you can commit yourself to one day a week. There are so many crock pot meals that I'll, I'll add to my list. Mm -hmm. And there are a ton of things you can do to prep in advance mm -hmm. that it is convenient. We did a sheet pan like, meal in the oven mm -hmm. with uh, um, chicken and vegetables. And I just, and I have meal like prep a, containers and we made pack. eight lunches in one, yep. one sheet pan. Yeah. If you can spend one day you know, where you have a couple hours to just chop up a bunch of food, prepare it in advance, either cook it in advance, like you were saying, or even just free arrange it. Mm -hmm. You know, when you watch cooking shows and everything, that looks so easy. Well, yeah, they have somebody chopping everything oh, yeah. up in advance, <laughs> <laughs> everything laid out in measured bowls. Yep. I mean, that's what takes forever, yep. you know. And then one of the viewers so, here, they made another comment that a lot of times there's manager specials. So it's basically things that are have been on the shelf that they're maybe trying to get rid of, trying to push. Um, that you can you can check out. I know my dad always knew when the meat was going to go on sale, and he would go to the grocery store and snag you know dinner for the next few nights. Yep. If you're young and spry, go grocery shopping the last hour that the store is open. You will always find deals. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Always because like like two thirds to seventy five percent off. I remember they used to do the rotisserie chickens, which yes. that's literally no work on your part because you can just eat it it's done rotisserie i used to make a lot of chicken salad and stuff out of that yeah. but um the rotisseries towards the end of the night they would decrease it was like three dollar rotisseries because they make new rotisseries every day you remember it was like every yep. tuesday thursday you know they'd sell them at nine o'clock at night yep. <laughs> they'd change the price so um there are definitely ways it, it does take a little bit of work in advance, but if you can get into a groove, you can definitely eat healthier, you know, and pretty affordable. Mm -hmm. All right. Eating out. Oh, no. That's it. Yeah. 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 And unfortunately, things like meal plans are never as affordable as they sound. And so you got to be campus. careful there now. No, like, when you're there's going so many <laughs> places online you can go to. So many reddit or just or just google of people that have already done the planning for you and you just get the idea that it helps like that so all right next question in fact i think there was one, you know I, sorry one last thing uh, doing a plug here for something i don't remember exactly what it's called i think it's called uh like snap diet or snap cooking or something like that and this person went out and their experiment was to only buy things that you could buy on food stamps Okay. which is nothing and, prepared and cook healthy good delicious meals with it and it's something great i don't want to get the numbers wrong so i won't even guess but it was like crazy cheap like it, it beat us on our budget and it was wow. like well-made food and it, it's like a blog or something you can you'll have to google that if I, if I find it i'll put it in a comment here but, okay. 
Yeah. It, yeah. Anyways. <clears throat> All right. You ready for the next question? Yeah. yeah. Let's go. What were your personal expenses or, oh, I didn't budget that moments while in college? That's the one I want to answer. Though. Oh, I didn't budget that. Okay. Mm-hmm. The time that I was trying to bring a pipe home from Lowe's and I put it through the opening of the armrest into the car oh, yeah. and rested it on the, uh, the, the, the thing, dashboard. Like the, mm-hmm. And when I slammed the trunk, it launched it through the windshield. Mm-hmm. I remember that. I did good. not budget. That was great. <laughs> yeah, you don't typically budget for new windshields. <laughs> I did not budget for. Well, I didn't budget in college, so that's kind of bad. But <laughs> things that I spent money on that I didn't see coming. How about that? Um, uh, fun things like opportunities to go like to a concert. My buddy was like, "Hey, Jimmy Buffett's playing in Charlotte. How'd you like to take a uh, trip?" And then we took it. <laughs> Didn't budget for that ahead of time. No. Or this happened to me. Um, we cleaned for pretty much 72 hours straight when we were moving out of our apartment. And it was mm-hmm. spotless. It looked better than we had moved into it. And the yeah. last thing that we were going to do was I was going to scrub the shower after I took while I took a shower because I was we, it was t- coming up. And the person that coming to expect the apartment came early so i didn't have a chance to scrub the couple of hairs out of the basin of the shower and they charged us our entire security that, deposit i would have fought that there that's was, crazy that would have been the lawyers <laughs> stanley steamer i had to rent <laughs> when we had red punch oh i remember that that was, a hol- that was good that was a good party though. <laughs> Advised there, or the uh, burns I didn't, in the carpet from the hookah coals. I did not budget for my replacement textbook after my house got robbed, and I didn't have renter's oh. insurance, oh. which happened but while we were on bet- spring break having fun. Uh, yeah. Which is like ten dollars a month, by the way. Get renter's insurance, <laughs> absolutely. Get it. Yeah, I, I have. I have a tenant. I'm a. I'm a landlord, and I have a tenant. And it's required in the lease because I I do I am not liable for anything within that apartment that is a personal possession of theirs. I'm liable for basically like the the walls and the floors and stuff. I definitely feel like travel budget is super important, even if you're not mm-hmm. planning on taking crazy vacation trips or anything. But just in general, I feel like you travel more you end up driving more i don't know jimmy it. buffett's gonna play in charlotte and you gotta go what your team your <laughs> team makes that, the championship but... oh yeah you should go it doesn't happen very mm-hmm. often and so those are all these kind of holy experiences smoke. budget for experience the team plays in miami place. and you have a chance to take what you didn't know your future wife down in the truck for a game right <laughs> and Yes. So I, I, this is neat because there is a theme here and you just caught it, right? Yep. It's Budget better plans. to go through the trouble of cooking, eating healthy, things like that, to save money so that mm-hmm. you can have these experiences instead. I would rather have taken the trip to see Jimmy Buffett than eat out every meal. Now, I did both and I'm still paying for it. But, <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. the, if, if you're trying to do this the right way and not... I paid seven thousand dollars in interest last year on my student loans. FYI, oh, we paid you're right. seven thousand dollars <laughs> on Tony's student loan. I still have student loan debt uh, guilt, and so I, I tend to use the I there. Mm-hmm. We uh, are one now. Not raining Every... on your parade, but I did get the uh, the notes in from from my student loan organization stating that they were all paid in full. So uh, the <laughs> notes are in hand. <laughs> Happy and exactly. jealous. I'm not jealous at all, bro. You lead the way. We'll be there in a couple months. We are, we are in striking distance. Absolutely. Now, that being said, every, every time I tell this, I feel like we're almost advocating for, ah, screw it. Do whatever you want. You can just pay it off later. <laughs> no. no oh. It has not been a couple of years. It has not. No. Don't even go there. Okay. I just want to add something to that, though. Okay. I totally agree. Do not do that. However feel like for certain once in a lifetime experiences if you weren't able to do what we should have done which mm-hmm. is budget for experiences 
don't miss out on them. You mean Does that make sense? a six-week backpacking tour of Europe? Yes, we are paying for that, and I would never trade that experience for anything. Mm. However, I would have tried to pre-save for that experience. Which I could have if I wasn't blowing money on all kinds of stupid stuff. Exactly. So and it's so doable. It's live carefully live so Live carefully that... so you can do these things instead of paying for them later. But don't nice. not do those things. Nice. I, I don't agree with that. <laughs> cool. You know, it's important to – there's a balance. It's impossible to figure out where that right. is, but – so this. So we're running. Oh, I would go want to go to the next question because it kind of feeds into what we're talking about. Yeah, what I was going to say is I think we're running short on time, and so we should wrap it up with a teaser, which is this: next week, mm -hmm. let's talk about the plan that we do tell students on how to budget because it is not easy as a student with these random giant expenses that show up a couple times a year, like books and tuition. Uh, the fact that your income does this as you go home for a break and then you come back to school and then you go for an internship and then you come back, you know. So tune in next week and we'll talk about how you budget with a wildly irregular income and wildly irregular expenses because you can do it and be ready to go to see Jimmy Buffett. Mm -hmm. Which, I guess which is also it. irregular though. I mean, those experiences mm -hmm. pop up at random too, right? right? But it, we, will, we will talk about that next week. So I guess that brings us to the end. Uh, thank you for your attention and your time. The fact that you've watched this and spent this time with us uh, means the world. We hope that it's been helpful. If it has, hit all the buttons, like, share, leave a comment, especially the comment. We would love to answer your question. And if you have one and you leave it as a comment on this post, we will absolutely answer it for you next week. Uh, in addition to that, we're everywhere on social media, including Justin and Nicole will make sure that we have links to their profiles in the comments for this so uh, for this show. Come hang out with us. We're joining the Twitter world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a what, new experience. Like, um, 15 years later. You know, <laughs> yeah. Just remember this. Twitter was invented as a way for people to interact with the internet from their cell phone before you could do that. Huh. That that's why you get text message notifications, by the way, buddy. The original Twitter was a system for sending text messages to and from the internet. Huh. When I was your age. Exactly. If you do any one thing today, <laughs> it would be on purpose. That's our goal. That's why we talk about what we talk about at the Intentional Academy. We do not always get it right. But I don't want to ever look back and say, man, I didn't mean to do that. So. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great night. Yep. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye.